when merit doesn't matter. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Now look around you. You can't help but notice, even among those who are supposedly well-educated, objective standards of excellence are out the window. From the way we speak. I think of this moment as a moment that is about great momentum. I think we all should take note of the momentum, sitting in these chairs in this moment, to then continue with this moment and lead and not waste a minute because we don't have a minute to spare. Zero standards about the way we dress. Let's style a futuristic look. The handheld massager just kind of feels right. And here's the whole fit. Hopefully we are giving time traveler. What is up guys? Today I have an interesting topic. It's actually sagging and how to use it. If you like to wear really baggy shirts, I really recommend trying this out. It can really help improve an outfit. And don't even talk to me about the way we write. Hmm, you get the point. But it's not just laziness or sloppiness at play here. In our schools, in our corporate boardrooms, and in politics, what's best about America is slowly being erased, replaced by a slavish devotion to equity and diversity. These concepts are being relentlessly promoted in woke curricula from kindergarten on up. And in high school, we see how evil this really is. Consider what just happened in Northern Virginia, where school administrators purposely withheld from students applying to college the fact that they had, in fact, been recognized as national merit scholars, all because the administrators didn't want to hurt the feelings of the students who didn't get the scholarships. What does this mean? Well, this means that the students were punished by woke schools because the students excelled. We have discovered at TJ that the principal and the, the uh, director of student services has been hiding the award to students that are called commended students. During the course of my reporting, I discovered my son was a commended student two years ago, but the principal kept it a secret. So and it gets worse at the college level. Now, after the George Floyd riots and the demands made by the BLM Gestapo, the top universities in the nation decided to turn their admissions criteria upside down. So instead of keeping the bar high to encourage hard work by students across the country, schools drop standards, drop standardized test requirements. And to this day, those tests remain optional for many colleges. Now, while this helped increase the pool of diverse applicants, it does nothing to change the fact that we have generations of minority students who've been cheated by liberal educators. Last October, a report revealed the shocking state of things for Illinois third graders. Yet measuring objective merit, as they did in that study, itself, the left argues, is racist. Ridiculous. George W. Bush was right when he called this the soft bigotry of low expectations. And this racial radicalism has even reached otherwise sane schools in the South. Texas A&M School of Medicine removed photos of graduating seniors who are white males, which are the students that had pictures pr prominently displayed at the entrance of the school. This was done as an example of the university's commitment to DEI. Of course, this is just all dumbing down of America, and it's led by adults who should know better. Just as the left cheats children by ignoring objective measures of learning, so too did the American media cheat the public when it ignored the obvious about Joe Biden in the 2020 campaign. Have you taken a cognitive no, test? No, I haven't taken a test. Why the hell would I take a test? Come on, man. I am, uh, I am very willing to let the American public judge my physical and mental fil my physical as well as my mental fil <laughs> fitness. And they ignored, uh, of course, they decided to ignore what they already knew about the Biden family, that they were grifters, always on the take. So, of course, when Biden himself chose his cabinet, not based on their expertise or their talent, but based on whether they were a first, well, the first openly gay cabinet member, the first female treasury secretary, the first Hispanic and first immigrant to lead DHS, the first lesbian, African-American press secretary. I mean, how is it all working out for us? Joe Biden has had Mayorkas telling him uh, that the border is closed. Man, 
if if there's this idea that you know maybe men have access to paternity leave, but it's frowned on if they actually use it, uh, then uh, obviously uh, uh, you know that doesn't work for a, a marriage like mine. President Biden met with three U.S. winners of the 2022 Nobel Prize. This is an important civil rights uh, accomplishment that achieved that was achieved in a bicameral and a bipartisan uh, way. I'm hungry. Bye. Carmel. And of course, we're all relieved that another first, Rachel Levine, is working hard in uniform at HHS. From my perspective, um, gender affirming care is medical care. Gender affirming care is mental health care. And gender affirming care is suicide prevention care. No one on earth thinks that Dr. Levine was the most qualified person for that position, but there you have it. And now it's officially two years into this administration. This is where we're left with this White House in charge. We found a handful of documents were failed uh, were filed in the wrong place. You're going to find there's nothing there. There's a lot that we have to work on together. Uh, and uh, together we're working on uh, how to uh, uh, keep a free and open Indo-Pacific. Those are the words of Kajan, Kajan, Katanji Drown Jackson, our Supreme Court Justice. But beyond that embarrassment, we're left with an economy where layoffs are happening faster than Alec Baldwin denials. Today, Google joined its tech counterparts at Amazon and Facebook and announcing big layoffs, 12,000 to be exact. Ditto for the big investment banks like Goldman Sachs and more are coming. Well, they all wanted Biden. And what they got was Bidenomics. Though in the long run, rejecting basic standards of merit never works out, not for the sake of political expediency and not for the sake of race, ethnicity, or sexual orientation. So it's up to all of us to fight against the left's woke tyranny of mediocrity. Parents are battling this in schools. Conservatives are exposing this fraud in our politics. And perhaps most important, though, is that each of us demonstrate a strong work ethic to those around us. Stop coddling employees. Stop coddling children. Well, by the way, my son the other day finished his homework, and he declared, Mom, I'm bored. Well, what was my answer to him? Pick up a broom, sweep out the garage. Well, <laughs> tough love? Yeah, you bet. Today's loafers, whatever their race or ethnicity, should not be tomorrow's leaders. Because if they are, we should expect more of what we're seeing right now. And that's failure as far as the eye can see. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.